He has an idea, he has a baby, it's the diesel engine, and you gotta sell it. This is the beginning of what his critics call stunts, but it's, it's more than that. Trying to set records for speed, records for endurance, these are all being done. They're all being done with gasoline power plants. He's gonna do them with diesel power plants. The New York Auto Show. France, England. Even Henry and Edsel Ford in Dearborn. In Clessy's backyard was a place he knew well back in his early days. A proving ground like no other was getting back on its feet to become what we know today as the greatest spectacle in racing. In 1927, the track had been for sale for a while, and Eddie Rickenbacker, who was the World War I flying ace, had been a driver in the 500 before World War I. And so he purchased the track. And there's Eddie Rickenbacker, famous war race. Graham McNamee has him talking for the radio audience. Classy Cummins went to Rickenbacker and said, we've got a diesel engine that we would like to run in the 500 and we think it can go the distance. Eddie Rickenbacker told Classy that if his Duesenberg car with the diesel engine could do four laps in excess of 80 miles an hour, they would include it in the field, regardless of whether it was among the fastest 40. When he goes to the Indianapolis 500 for the first time, he doesn't even trailer the car from Columbus to Indianapolis. They drive it. They drive it up there every day for practice. They drive it up there and they drive it back every day. Engineers take a look at that and they say, oh, my God, what a beast. 